Well, whether you like Walmart or not, there's actually a ton that we can learn about inventory from them. Back in the 1970s, they were the very first to come up with distribution centers, and this is what made it so they could offer their rock bottom prices. And so what they found was that if they had a central distribution center, they could buy bulk quantities of items, which drove the price down that they were paying per item. And then from that distribution center, they would send the inventory out to their individual stores. It was brilliant and it was the first model of its kind and it caused them to be able to undercut the prices of all of the competitors. Now, I'm not necessarily promoting Walmart, but there's some things that we can learn about this in our own homes. Hi, I'm Dawn from The Minimal Mom and our family loves sharing about family minimalism. The problem is that sometimes when you hear the word minimalism, you think that it's kind of extreme, it's maybe a little bit too far, and it can sometimes turn people off. So what I wanna do today is not talk about minimalism, but I wanna talk about this idea of inventory and how the two ideas go hand in hand. So like I said, Walmart revolutionized retail stores and discount stores back in the 1970s through this idea of distribution centers and that each store didn't have to make all of its own purchasing decisions rather it was all stored there and then the stores would order it from there so this allowed them then to buy big quantities of stuff and save money on it and so there's three things that I think we can learn from Walmart including one thing that happened in 2013 that cost them billions of dollars this is potentially the best lesson yet but we're gonna get there in just a second so lesson number one is this idea that we don't have to store all of the inventory in our own home we live in a time now where for most of us, I mean, again, depending on exactly where you live, but we don't actually have to store everything in our house. We do have access to be able to go to stores to get stuff as we need it, but also we've kind of forgotten about this lost art of borrowing stuff that we personally don't have to have everything that we can borrow it from other people, from our neighbors and friends and family members. We especially did this when it came to baby stuff. I couldn't believe how every baby shower I went to, everyone got all of the same new stuff and we use it for such a short period of time. And so I was like, enough of this. We got everything set hand or we borrowed it from friends and family and it was awesome and it saved us so much money but there's other things too that we've come to rely on other people like I don't have two crock pots I I borrow my mom's if I need it and Tom has even even though Tom does not like borrowing stuff he has started asking our neighbor when it comes to stuff like chainsaws and other things like that so this idea that we don't have to have all of the inventory in our own home. The second lesson we learned is what I mentioned, what Walmart learned the hard way in 2013. So in 2013, in the very first quarter, they lost over $3 billion because they had let extra inventory accumulate and their back storerooms were unorganized. This caused huge problems with not being able to find inventory and get it to where it needed to be. Does this sound familiar? You can already see where I'm going with this, right? If our storage areas in our home are a mess, if they're unorganized, then what do we do? We don't remember that it's there and we end up buying it again. And not only that, I mean, there's this financial cost where we buy stuff again because we forgot that we had it, but we also sometimes forget about the mental cost of having all of this stuff. It takes mental energy to manage this stuff. We have to heat it, we have to cool it, we have to uh, protect it from getting wet or getting pest infested from all of the different things that could happen to it, we're constantly having to manage it and care for it. So most of us have let the inventory in our own homes creep up to a point where it's very difficult to manage. You know, Walmart has people they hire to manage their inventory. Most of us don't have that luxury, right? And so what we have found for ourselves is that if we can lower the inventory in our homes, not only do we not waste money on stuff from having to buy it again, but the mental load that is lifted is 
incredible. When we have just enough inventory to meet our daily needs, then it's very easy to manage. It doesn't require a lot of brain energy or emotional energy. Even if you're like me and not a uh, naturally organized person, it's very easy to keep everything straight, to remember what you have and to keep it in order. And so I don't have to work against the grain of my own wiring trying to organize all this stuff when it's not my natural tendency. But for those of you who are more naturally organized, what you'll probably also find is that your organizational systems, they were breaking down because you had too much inventory. It wasn't that the system wasn't working, it's like what Walmart was having. They had all this extra inventory, it was unorganized, and they just couldn't keep track of it anymore. And that often ha happens to those of you who are naturally organized. Your systems aren't working because they've been overloaded with too much inventory. So what do we do? Well, that's exactly what Walmart did. They pared down the inventory and that leads us to number three that if they have extra inventory if it's not being used it's not selling what do they do they clearance it they put it on sale they try to get it back out the door we need to do this in our own house too what does that look like for most of us uh, putting it on marketplace or unfortunately donating a lot of it right but if we can use these tactics to get the inventory scaled back down all of a sudden our organizational systems work again and it's very easy to keep our basement or our attic or our garage organized because it's not overloaded with inventory and so like I said in the beginning this idea of minimalism often people are like oh it's just it's too extreme you know it's too far but when I talk about it in terms of inventory that every single item in my house is something that I have to manage then it kind of starts to click and realizing that Managing this inventory takes time. It takes energy. It takes emotional energy. And so we are trading when we decide that we want to have this stuff in our house. It comes at a cost and we are trading something for that. So what we found for our own family is that as we significantly scaled back the inventory to the point where we got rid of about 80% of the stuff in our house, for me, that got it back down to a point where it's very easy to manage. Here is what is so funny to me though. What's so funny, we got rid of the bulk of the stuff in our house and I don't miss any of it. I don't feel like we're going without that it was any kind of sacrifice. I mean, very rarely have I thought, oh, I wish I had that back or I wish I wouldn't have gotten rid of it. I can count the number of things on one or two hands, but I would never trade the piece that we have in our home for those five or 10 things that I might have accidentally got rid of. It is amazing how as we've scaled back the inventory, our house, it runs more smoothly. It's a more peaceful place to be. It's a more enjoyable place to be. And I can keep it organized and I can stay on top of it. But one other point with this, now realize this, Back in 2013, Walmart had people that their full-time job was to make the purchasing decisions for the store. They were trained in this, they had systems in place to analyze what it was the store was buying, and yet they still made mistakes. They still ended up with extra inventory that wasn't being sold, that people didn't wanna buy. I mean, every time you go to a store like Walmart or Target, they always have stuff on clearance. I mean, it just happens. Even though they're skilled and that's what their full-time job is to research this and make these purchasing decisions, they still make mistakes. I mean, if these trained, skilled professionals, this is what they do for a full-time job, if they still make mistakes, is it probably to be expected that we're still gonna make mistakes from time to time? That, yeah, we're gonna fall prey to marketing, we're gonna think something's gonna be a solution to a problem we have, and then it's not, and then we bought it. But here's what I wanna tell you. Buying a wrong thing, making a wrong decision, that's not the worst part. The worst part is what we do next. If we say, oh, now I'm gonna punish myself for that wrong decision and I'm gonna keep this thing that I bought wrongly forever and I'm, I have to keep it because I paid money for it. That's what really makes it a wrong decision. If, you know, if we just mess up and we buy something wrong and then we decide to sell it on Marketplace or we donate it, then you know what? It was a learning experience, it is what it is. I feel like the only thing that truly makes it a wrong decision is if we continue to waste our precious time and energy housing it and inventorying it and managing and keeping track of it. That's what truly makes it a wrong purchase. If we buy it, it was a mistake, but then we pass it on through our house, 
We learned from it, it is what it is. We probably won't do that again. So let's not punish ourselves for these wrong decisions. I mean, can you imagine if like the people at Walmart, if they got like fired every time they made a wrong decision? I mean, that it's not how it works, right? So I wanna encourage you that we all make mistakes. I'll still make mistakes from time to time. Like I'm a sucker for a good deal, something on clearance, I mean, a garage sale, like, I, once in a while I still do mess up but it's what I do next that decides whether it was really a wrong decision or not so as you think about minimalism or simplifying your home I think this idea of inventory can really help a lot as you approach a space a drawer a cabinet your basement that you say okay how much inventory do I want to manage is this a manageable amount for me or is it simply too much if we forget what's in there if we can't keep it organized that's a pretty good clue that it's too much and so then we just start to work on scaling it back and we have lots of videos to help you with that to walk you through and the different tactics that you can use depending on what area you're decluttering but I do like how this idea of looking at it as inventory it can help to take some of the emotion out of it of just like okay it's too much I can't manage it all and that's okay Okay. you're not wrong because you can't manage it all I can't manage it all right I mean you see how far I've had to go with our house to get it to a manageable point and that's okay there's nothing wrong with me and that's not wrong so if you haven't done so already I hope you subscribe so we can spend more time together I would love to help you through some of these areas especially the more difficult areas like sentimental items and clothing so I'll link to some of my favorite videos about those topics down below but otherwise I hope you have a really good day I love you and I'll visit with you again soon